excuse me, driver, pull over, I need to throw up. Hello, welcome to the channel. This is the Crankin' Wagon 1952 barn door. We're going to uh, get this up to a beautiful specimen, get it back to its former glory. It's been painted before, I didn't do it, uh, but we're going to continue with the restoration. The underneath of it needs a lot of work, mechanical, gearbox, motor, interior. Stay along on the journey. Let's see this thing get completed. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to do, get it up in the air. Let's have a look at the underneath of it, get a bit of a plan of what we're going to do. Let's get that done. Okay. Well, let us have a little look-see underneath here. We might just start at the front. Now, as you know, barn doors are very different to normal split-screen combis. Uh, I might have to go and get a torch, get a light, get a flashlight. Let us have a look-see under here. So, there's, a, yeah, a lot of... <laughs> A lot of, a lot of mud and grease and yeah, it's bits of surface rust. Nothing too major though, which is pretty good. Uh, but you can see the front beam is completely different to a normal split screen. Uh, the linkages are all different. The tie rods come from a totally different position. Let's just come under here and I'll show you. Yeah, you can see there they've got this humongous, I suppose, channel chop out of it, which is pretty cool. I think if you wanted to lower these things, it'd be pretty easy. But yeah, you can see the tie rod, even the spindles, all totally different to a normal combi. The shock amount, obviously the placement of the steering center pin. Yeah, and you've got these little bars that run along here as a, must be a bit of a reinforcement for the beam. Yeah, you can see that they have definitely changed over the years, they changed their design of the underneath of these things. Anyway, there's a little bit of a repair we're gonna to have to do here. This thing here's had a, a wallop, and we'll have to fix that up. But yeah, I mean, look, there's a little bit of surface rust underneath here. Obviously the, you know, all these mechanical parts just need to be cleaned and, you know, probably have a bit of a look at them. That's definitely gonna to have to be replaced. The master cylinder there, that uh, looks toast. But the rest of the chassis, I mean, that has some surface rust on it just across there. You can see that. But all the, uh, you can see the jacking point down there has been replaced. The chassis rails look perfect. And there's a few little repairs up, up I can see. That's the, uh, the step. We can unbolt that, get that out of the way, take that off and restore it. Let's come in down to the rear end and have a bit of a look under here. And you can see again, some more differences in the rear end. The reduction hubs are totally different. There's no shock absorbers back here. They've got this little unit here, which is the shocker. And it goes onto that little, <laughs> that little twisty, twisty angle, little bracket there. Gearbox is totally different. You can see that it has been leaking. So that has to come out. We've got to get rid of that and get it fixed. Obviously tubular cradle for the gearbox. There's the tap up there for the fuel. And the fuel tank is behind that uh, divider there. So they've obviously modified the normal barn door to turn it into an ambulance from the factory, of course. Uh, that bracket there for the front of the transmission, that's totally different too. But yeah, look, you know, it's not in too bad condition now i've been trying to do a little bit of research on what the color of the underneath of this uh, bus should be and from all accounts that i can find it's gray but if you look at this one it's black so i mean this looks like to me to be the factory paint but that doesn't look gray to me and even the floor there it looks black Unless that's a bit of overspray, which you know what, that could be because under there looks like it's grey. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's really hard to see under here what this original colour was. But I definitely want to do it, uh, obviously, back to original. Again, a bit of surface rust up in there. So I think what we'll do is uh, get the front beam out, get the gearbox out, get the wheels off, start to give this a bit of a clean up. Actually, you know what even be, might even be a better idea is I might put it out there and gurney the underneath of this 
first just to try to remove some of this loose dirt as a good starting point and then we can uh i mean i don't know how dirty it is this yeah this is pretty dirty so we, i think we might do that get the gurney on on it and just give this underneath a bit of a clean up all right let's get this off the lift and we'll wheel it outside and start Right, back up on the hoist after a bit of a wash underneath. Uh, let's get these wheels off. Might as well. What crustiness lies ahead? Let's see. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll pull all this apart. Yeah, nice. Okay, other side. And obviously we'll have to get some penetrain. Just keep penetraining up all these little nuts and bolts and try and get this gearbox out hey eh? okay onto the front wheel okay those suckers into the sandblaster we'll give those a quick blast and then we can phosphoric acid them we might even uh, blue them blue them with some oil let's go okay so after putting a little bit of penetrine on all these bolts here we've got to start basically getting this gearbox ready to remove uh, one interesting point that i did just discover is for the front linkage to the gear shifter i have to go through an access panel in the floor to get to the grub screws because they're on the top and i don't think i can undo them from this side so i'll have to go inside the cabin or in yeah inside the back i suppose and see if i can undo it from there but then yeah, two, uh, two nuts here, 17s, then obviously spring plates and shock amounts. We can get all those off too. Okay, let's get this sucker out of here. Okay, so we've got the shocker arm off. It's just a, you can see this bush here is clapped out. We'll have to get a new one of those, if we can, or we might have to make it. We'll see what happens. Uh, all I've done now is just knock down the tabs here um, out of the way so we can knock these undo these 19 mil bolts also the brake lines i've just cut them because well <laughs> that's supposed to be hollow there's no brake fluid in that and also undone the electricals for the starter motor so yeah let's knock out these 19s that will free up the spring plate to the axle tube and then all we're going to do then is undo these two at the front here and the two at the back right there and the linkage and Mr. Gearbox is ready to come out. So let's let's uh, see how hard these guys are gonna get to get out. And one of the next things we've got to do is obviously take out the handbrake cable inside the drum. So drum's got to come off, so that nut's got to come off. I have Big Bertha. Let's see how she does. Easy peasy. Look at that. Not even breaking a sweat. Uh, I don't suspect. They might actually just top, tap off. Ha <laughs> ha! They are, they're just coming off. Woohoo! Done. They actually don't look too bad inside. A few cobwebs, but that's alright. And we can get some new seals for all this stuff in here. Awesome! Okay, onto the other side. Mm -hmm. I have been actually. Well, this one's loose, so we're easy on that. But I have been. Putting a bit of penetrine uh, behind the, the drum too. This one wants to play ball and come off. It does, it's moving. No need, no need. You just kind of give it a bit of a... Need some tappy tappy. Ta-da! Do you know what? Well, they've got spider webs in there, but I just wonder if these bloody brake cylinders are any good. I might just... 
might get lucky and not have to buy new brake cylinders. Okay, next is taking our springy springies out. Now we've got a screw on the back of this to get take off and that will release up the cable and we're good. Okay, so the drums are off. Uh, we've just lowered it back down. Now we need to <laughs> work out how the hell this floor comes out because I need to get to that little inspection plate to take off the uh, gear linkage. So I'm looking inside here and I mean, look, they've got a handle here. So I'm, I'm just hoping this is a cover and you can actually take this off. And there's a couple of screws here. I've just put some WD-40 on those. Let's see what happens if we undo, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five screws. Let's see if that panel comes off and we can get to the fuel tank and that inspection plate. Let's have a look. Oh yeah. So it is the whole thing, okay. So the whole lot comes off. Uh, there's some small screws along the back over there we've got to get. All right, let's go and get those out. Let's see if I can show you guys what's going on inside. There's like a little bit of a void. This thing is just damn right funky. So they've got, okay, they've got some material. Oh, there's a plate. That all, that's all coming. Oh, got a little bit of rust under here. Okay, yeah, so obviously two inspection plates. Okay, this is going to get, this is going to get interesting. I'll get some WD-40 on these screws here because they are probably not going to want to play the game and come out. But I've got a feeling to get to the fuel tank, you've got to take that one there off. Yeah, very weird, very weird. I mean, this is obviously how they've gone and modified a standard barn door to have the shelf there. So let's just have a look in here. I can bloody get to it. I might have to just pull out this. Um, yeah, I think I'll just do that. Five seconds. All right, so I've pulled that out. Yeah, it's had some water in it. You can see that plywood's not uh, in the best of conditions, but yeah, look, I don't know. I think we'll try and do something with it. I don't know. We might even have to just remake that whole piece, I think. It just doesn't look very structurally sound. It's quite rotten. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Okay, let's have a look inside here. This is very interesting. So, nothing there, unfortunately. I'll get our little torch. Um, yeah, but there's this uh, ducting, obviously, from the factory. So that'll be heat heat for winter, obviously. Looks like some creatures have made, have made a nest down in there. And this will need a good clean out. But you can see what they've done. They've just fabricated up a frame and then uh, just chopped down the floor from where it would have been as a barn door. So, yeah, obviously for us to get to what I need, we're going to have to take those two plates off. And look, I mean, they're just bare metal. It doesn't even look like they've been painted. So we'll sandblast those and repaint them. Then we can screw them back down and go from there. But yeah, uh, WD-40 on all these screws, I think. Yeah, it's just sitting on there. Yeah, let's get some lubrication in these screws and get them off. So we have all the little offending article screws out of that panel. Um, and of course, once I removed the panel, I just realized another bonehead maneuver. The inspection plate is just down there. So that's what I've got to take off to get to the linkage. It wasn't under there after all.
shilly boy. Anyway, but check this out. This is removed now. Have a look. And let's have a look and see what's underneath it. Because it's gross. There's this. Oh, God. What the heck is that? Well, the fuel tank's there for a start, but what in the dickens is this? Ew, it's like a, it's like an oil. It's like they've gone and put oil around that. It must be like a gasket seal. Ha, huh, what a crack up. Uh, now the fuel tank is very, I thought it would be a ute fuel tank, but that is its own creation wow how bizarre is that it's not yeah totally different fuel tank you can see it's just a square box they've just made a square box wowzers huh all right well that's i mean look that had to be removed anyway because it needs sandblasting and and all in here needs bloody cleaning and painting anyway but hey cool all right uh, we'll take that other plate off. That just goes straight to the engine bay, the other one, so there's no big deal with that one. We can get that out. Yeah, let's move on with the whole gearboxy thing that we're supposed to be doing and take off this little plate down here, and then we can get to the screws. So that looks to me like a 10 mil. We'll go and get a 10 mil socket and buzz this out. Let's remove our inspection plate. There's our little screws that we've got to undo. Okay, well, that probably won't work, will it? No, wishful thinking. I will we'll go and get the appropriate spanner. Okay, grub screws are removed. Let's uh, put this thing back up in the air and continue with getting the gearbox out. So I decided we better drain the oil before I get this gearbox out. She's ready to go. I've taken the two front mounts off as well which were a 17 mil. And now we've got two drain plugs here, which are a 14 mil, one here and one here. We'll just undo those and put the oil into pan. Let's see what sort of condition this uh, gearbox oil looks like. Oh, wow. Okay, that's pretty black. That is Oh no, okay, we're getting some colour now. But that first initial, yeah man, this thing has not been changed in a long time. Let that drain out and we'll uh, undo the other one as well in a second. And we'll move to the other side. Probably won't be much in this, but we'll see. There we go. Number two. Okay, on to the jack. So we'll just undo the last two big, uh, big nuts at the back and just prop it up with the jack and we should be good to go. So, all the bolts are undone. We should be able to just remove that cradle. Obviously, gearbox mount is sheared. I we'll have to get a new one of those. But I think uh, we are ready to come down slightly. There we go. And then we should be able to just pull this out. That's it. Pull that one forward a bit. Let's drop that one down. out okay so the gearbox is out of the cranking wagon and this is a very unusual gearbox it's a one year only model so it's only a 52 and after 52 they changed so interesting i couldn't get the spring plates to separate off this part here <laughs> and it's because there's a bloody collar here so you've got to undo these two bolts and move the collar back and then it'll free up your spring plate. So that took me a bit of head scratching to work out why the hell I couldn't just, you know, pry them out like you normally do. Uh, again, that's a total different design to the later, later combi. So yeah, very unusual looking gearbox. You can see here, I do have a 56 split case box 
well there's one over here i'm going to have a look at and you can see the difference between this one this is the one that came out of my sister's you know totally different ribbed design on it and you can see the top the top design's totally different the uh nose cone obviously there's a removable nose cone on it and yeah this thing here is just whack wacky weird uh, as you can see there you know this whole section here is totally different Anyway, the plan for this is to obviously clean it and we might even just sandblast some of these components here and, and make them look schmick again. Hopefully, we'll, we might just do a little bit of testing on the bench to see if all the gears work. I mean, look, if we have to rebuild it, we, we rebuild it. You know, if it's jumping out of gears or not, we don't know. We'll see how we go. But yeah, first, first off, we'll get it out there on the decking. I'll put some plastic down and then we can uh, give it a gurney, a bit of degreasing and clean it up. I mean, look look at these boots. I mean, I don't know if they're the original boots or not, but man, they're not bad. If they if they are, they're 71 years old, which is pretty insane. And they weren't leaking. They actually weren't leaking any oil out of those boots at all, which is absolutely nuts. Very, very interesting indeed. All right, let's go and get this thing cleaned up. Two thousand years later. Okay, so gave it a quick clean and a degrease. I don't want to bore you with all the the cleaning stuff but you know she's uh at least it's got all the grease off it you can see here's our little serial number on the side there and there's also another serial number stampings for the cases looking good so the plan now will be obviously uh we'll take the axles off it take the starter motor off and then just give the the body a good old clean i might even actually plug it all up and glass bead blast it which will get that uh, magnesium back to a nice clean I suppose finish and then we might even get it coated uh, I know that the original gearboxes well and the motors too they came with a goldish acid kind of that they dipped onto it to stop the magnesium from oxidizing and corroding so yeah I might even do that with the with the block as well I'll see if there's a local uh, plater that can actually um, dip these things for us. So. All right, so I have obviously chopped off one of the old uh, uh, I thought they were good, but they're not they're actually got cracks all through them like right through here So anyway got those off uh, we're going to separate the axles off the gearbox And then we can seal up the gearbox and uh, keep going with the cleaning process We want to get it a lot nicer than this obviously So undo these 14s take the cover off and take the axle off. So let's get her done paper gasket so we're starting to strip the gearbox now uh, we obviously have to take off the axles so the reduction hubs have to be split apart and then we go inside here take the split pin out or the circlip I should say and then we can slide out the axles yeah then we can start getting this thing done so drums are off already uh, let's just continue in undoing the uh, backing plate bolts here and then we can go from there and there goes the oil it's utterly gross oh that's right because i didn't i didn't drain the uh, reduction hubs oh well yeah we're making a mess now aren't we <laughs> it's just pouring out i forgot to drain the reduction hubs no oh god diff oil's just the worst Okay guys, so just using, I used this first just to crack the gasket and then just two large screwdrivers opposite sides and just pry, pry, pry and out it comes. So what a messy job. Anyway, the gears are out. We'll make sure that that just stays in one piece like so. Now that we've taken the, the circlips ac actually came off inside the, the cog, so this is off now, we just give it a tap. Here we go. So we got one axle out. Yeah, we're good. Now we can get to the circlip in there to take the actual axle out. Uh, good, awesome, done. We will leave it at that. I will catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for the new subscribers. See you then.